The NYPD is on the lookout for fare evaders because they say it prevents violent crimes from happening. They say the people that are committing most of the crimes down here aren't paying their fares. They're then going on to commit violent offenses and then go on to create lawlessness throughout the transit system. Huh, so after deploying troops to the subway, the city figures out that the criminals destroying it don't also pay to use it. But now the question is, can they catch enough crooks to arrest their way out of this mess? Or is it already too late? One after another after another. With the dozens of fare beaters, our cameras caught jumping the turnstile. You'd almost think the subway is free, but not paying still comes at a cost. What? They say he first pulled out a knife and then a gun. Police say he was armed and didn't pay the fare. The subway is very dangerous. You leave out your house every day not knowing what's going to happen. The fear factor has been rising for weeks after a series of high-profile crimes. The NYPD is on the lookout for fare evaders because they say it prevents violent crimes from happening. There is a negative emotional and psychological impact that this policy will have on many New Yorkers. Of the three people arrested Thursday night, all had warrants. So fare evasion is now an existential threat to the subway because according to officials, it enables and emboldens criminals, many of whom go on to do much worse than just not pay the fare once they get inside. But what nobody's talking about is that subway crime doesn't just hurt the people who use the subway. It hurts every single person in New York, whether you take the train or not. And now everyone in the city is going to pay the price for the lawless behavior that's been going on down here for far too long in the form of new taxes and new fees. Oh yes, they're coming. And once they're here, they're not going away because that's not how fees work. But before we get into how every New Yorker's life is going to get harder, whether or not you take the train, it's important to understand what steps the city's taking right now to try and clean this place up because they're so practical and so basic, it almost looks like they intentionally let this place fall apart on purpose. Subway turnstiles. You swipe, you pay, and you go about your day. At least, that's how this is supposed to work. But fare evasion's now so bad, it's costing the city 700 million a year. On top of that, the people who aren't paying to use the train, some of them are bringing weapons into the train, committing very high profile crimes, and it all starts when they break in and don't pay. The 36 year old man who was shot can be seen walking through the subway gate at Nostrand Avenue Thursday. Police say he was armed and didn't pay the fare. Cell phone then capturing him on the train. He first pulled out a knife and then a gun, but the other man wrestled it away and fired. So the guy that got in entered through one of the emergency exits. Somebody was coming out, the door was open, and he went in, which means that he broke the law in order to use the subway. And let's stop right there. The law abiding pay for the privilege of using the train, but lawbreakers, they're committing a crime to use it. Paying customers are thinking about their lives and going about their day, but criminals, their mental state is that they're ready to do something else. And if you think about it, they've already committed one crime and gotten away with it. What other crimes could they get away with? And the attacker took that law-breaking attitude with them on the train. And this is one of those rare moments where we see a criminal commit a crime, get on the train, and become emboldened so much so that they immediately start fights with other passengers. Passengers. And this supports the idea that when a society fails to punish minor crime, bigger crimes are on the way. Plainclothes officers arrest him at the Utica Avenue station after saying he had a bench warrant for a robbery in Queens in November. So to give you an idea of how widespread fare evasion is, the news crew with their cameras and their whole team were able to just set up virtually anywhere and get a whole bunch of people offending on camera. I've already seen a few people jump in, but it's fascinating the people they caught jumping in just so happen to have warrants out for their arrest. They didn't have to do any planning to get this on camera. They just had to show up and it was there waiting for the news. And crime is now so bad. You've got the army, you've got the National Guard, you've got what look like SWAT teams patrolling various stations at various times of the day. But all the problems start right here where people enter and exit. And look, if the city could get 100% of people to pay to use the train, it would feel and look very different down here. Either criminals would stay out because they don't want to get arrested when they try to use the emergency exit, or they'd make the small financial sacrifice of $2.90 and then they would go be criminals elsewhere in the city, but not down here. The NYPD is on the lookout for fare evaders because they say it prevents violent crimes from happening. These are going to be your people who are going to have guns, they're going to have knives, they're going to push people on the tracks. So it looks like the police have had reason to believe this would be effective 
for a long time, but for some reason they've been prevented from policing the turnstiles. Now maybe all this crime is the result of progressive thinking that says people shouldn't be arrested or criminalized for not paying to use the train. But since when is it okay to steal? If you steal, there should be a punishment for that. Otherwise, what will be your reason for not stealing in the future? And as we'll see shortly, the people riding the train for free, they're stealing from the entire city, and now the entire city's gonna pay for it. But before we get into that, it's estimated that 14% of subway riders didn't pay to ride the train today, which is almost half a million criminals in the system right now, because 3.2 million ride every single day. But the problem is the city can't arrest everybody who's down here, so how do they pick and choose who to nab? They're looking for transit recidivists, those who repeatedly commit crimes in the transit system. And chances are, the NYPD says, they're not paying their fare before committing the crime. Interesting, so they're specifically on the lookout for people who are coming in who've done it before. They're also known as recidivists. Try saying that word 10 times in a row. These are people who repeatedly commit crime in the subway system, and apparently they're responsible for the vast majority of crimes. And not only was everyone caught on camera by the news, somebody with an outstanding warrant, the police have uncovered multiple firearms from those they arrest. And ask yourself, with half a million criminals down here every single day, how many of them could have something on them that could cause harm? And go figure, none of the people who have a weapon were paying customers. But how do the police know who's a repeat offender and who's not? He's being arrested. From the palm of their hands, police run the person's name through the system and are immediately notified if they're dealing with a recidivist. The NYPD says it's not looking to single out riders who can't afford to pay. So it looks like they got an app on their phone that they put your information into and then it pops up your whole record and they can see if you're one of the good guys or one of the bad guys. And things are now so dangerous down here that the only way to achieve safety might be to have a database with every single person in it. And that's a very frightening thing to think about, but the police have said they're looking for new technology that they can use to make the subway safer. What do you think that is going to be? And the NYPD Commissioner of Operations says he is searching for some kind of technology to use underground to help keep New Yorkers safe. And that man who was shot... Yeah, so they're probably talking about facial recognition without talking about facial recognition. And as crime continues to remain out of control, that's going to be the only solution that has any chance of working. One, two, three, four cameras all pointed right at the gate. I wouldn't be surprised if within the next 10 years we have a system that automatically flags your face and sends an alert to the authorities if the wrong person enters the train. But so far the good news is that if you get caught hopping and you're not on the naughty list, they're just writing tickets. You work for the city, so I can do this. I'm allowed to let you fare evade. But it's, the, it's your voice. That's the distinct voice. <laughs> but no matter what steps are taken, even if it's as simple as extra police, it's not going to be free. And ask yourself, where's the city going to get the money to pay for all this new stuff and all this safety? Are they going to get it from criminals who don't pay for anything? Or are they going to get it from the law abiding? You know the answer to this. So if you live in the city or if you visited recently, you know that these changes are not new, but this increase was the first one in a long time. 3.2 million total riders, minus 500,000 daily fare evaders. That's 2.7 million paying riders. 400,000 extra dollars a day if everybody pays an extra 15 cents. That's how they come up with these numbers. And even though it only seems like a little bit, it's something we're all paying for, and it could only get worse if more people decide to ride. For free. But nobody's talking about how this really means the law abiding are subsidizing criminals who ride without paying. Now the governor actually wants to boost the fare evasion fines up to $200 by the fourth offense. But this doesn't address the real problem that the subway itself is in some sort of a doom loop. The police are aware that fare evasion leads to increased crime inside the subway itself. As the amount of crime in the train goes up, the amount of riders willing to pay for that goes down. And you can only raise prices of subway transit so much before people can't afford it and are then forced to consider also breaking the law just to get somewhere. And the spiral just accelerates. Things keep getting worse. But before we talk about how New Yorkers who don't ride the train are also going to pay for it, it's important to understand that prices may rise again in the near future if things don't change. Millions of commuters can expect to pay anywhere from 4 to 6 percent more for subways, buses, tunnels, and bridges. Now, nobody ever wants to see a fare hike, but the MTA says they had no other 
other choice. They had to not only combat inflation, but also maintain current service levels. So according to the MTA, their priority here is to keep the system safe. The MTA says inflation's also part of the problem. But the problem with this plan is that New Yorkers aren't seeing any immediate results from it. Yes, the subway continues to operate. It does not shut down completely. And these price hikes went in before the current crime wave, which means you could probably make the case that fare increases are directly responsible for crime. And you know what? I think that's true only because we don't have real consequences like actual jail time for people who are caught doing something wrong down here. And critics say when you pair progressive justice with higher prices, you get recidivism. And think of who the victims of all this are. It's not the rich. I would prefer it not to go up because at this point in my life, I'm on a fixed income. MDA officials called the hikes modest and reasonable, adding that the money will be- So if you steal from the subway and the price goes up, you're hurting somebody who's probably in a very tough situation themselves and who hasn't decided that they're gonna break the law to try to get around that situation. They're doing the right thing. They're on a fixed income maybe. Maybe their job doesn't pay them a whole lot. Doesn't mean breaking the law is okay. And as you're about to see, this is a problem for New Yorkers, whether they use the subway or not. And it's forcing the city to come up with new innovative ways to tax us and charge us that we can't escape from. So here you have your friendly neighborhood congestion reader, which is gonna tax every single car on the road. But what nobody's talking about when it comes to these is that they are directly related to the losses the MTA incurs through fare evasion. These charge every car on the road 15 bucks. Larger vehicles like trucks, 18 wheelers, they're gonna pay more. And the reason everyone's gotta pay is because everyone's got a license plate and this toll is unavoidable. Now, when I first heard about congestion pricing, I thought it was gonna be awesome because I take the subway, my wife drives, we live outside of Manhattan, so she would never drive into the congestion zone. But then I started digging a little bit deeper and these things are actually gonna be a big disaster for the city. And the big problem is they're not gonna solve any of the problems they claim are out there. But the problem they are gonna solve is the fare evasion problem. Remember, the MTA loses $700 million a year, and the congestion system is required by law to generate at least $1 billion a year in revenue. And what this means is that if you have a car and you drive into Manhattan, you are now subsidizing people who ride the subway without paying because they don't have a license plate and you do. And let's look at the arguments in favor of these because I have. And proponents of congestion pricing say these are gonna lower pollution because less cars will be on the road. But the MTA's own studies show that places like the Bronx are gonna have much higher pollution after this rolls out. So we're redistributing the pollution, we're not eliminating it. And apparently it's gonna be so bad that they're already talking about using $130 million of the revenue that comes from congestion pricing to do things like install air filtration systems in schools near highways that are now gonna be full of smog. And they're also gonna spend 25 million on an asthma treatment program. Which is almost like a candy company starting to sell exercise equipment or a tobacco company that opens up a lung cancer treatment facility. And you wanna know why pollution redistribution is such a major issue here? It's not just because areas like Manhattan are gonna get nicer at the expense of the Bronx. The reality is actually much worse and much more frightening than that because you know what's gonna happen? The congestion tolls, they are gonna decrease traffic in the congestion zone. And it's gonna look like they're working because there are less cars. But now the traffic is elsewhere and things are worse. And you know what the cure is gonna be? The cure is gonna be more congestion pricing rolled out to those future areas as well. Because wherever these things are installed, they are both the cause of and solution to all of New York City's traffic and pollution problems. Isn't that convenient? And the city's gonna make millions billions off of them. All because criminals won't pay to use the transportation options that already exist. Now we need a massive cash grab disguised as saving the planet. Pretty soon you're gonna see readers like this all over New York City. It might not happen immediately, but watch, give it five years. The city will pick apart a town that's got the worst traffic. They'll set up the readers and then boom, it's gone. And every time they do it, they'll say they've got the proof for why we need more of them. But to many people, the common sense solution for New York's money problems aren't fancy new congestion readers. And no 
nobody in favor of congestion pricing wants to admit the solution to fare evasion is right here. Look at these bad boys. These things are 30 years old and they already exist and they already work. In fact, a grand total of zero people are able to fare evade these Iron Maiden gates. It's impossible to hop over. It's impossible. Oh, see, this car didn't work. Can't get in. Got to try again. And that's because they will not counter rotate. They rotate fine as an exit, but they will not rotate the other direction. But the problem with these gates is they're so practical and so low tech, they're not gonna make the MTA billions of dollars a year. And they also won't create the opportunity to tax every car on the road. And look at this station, that's where you got the Iron Maidens, then you got the regular gates over here. Which entrance do you think people are hopping into? Now yes, there's also the issue of the emergency exit, but now that people have seen a guy with a weapon get on the train by walking through one of those, maybe folks will be less likely to use them if it's not an actual emergency. By the way, there are police over here and both those fair evasions just happened steps away from where they are. But if you had the Iron Maidens at every unattended entrance, there wouldn't be any fair evasion there. And attended entrances where there's a lobby attendant, those could be places where you have an entrance like this that's maybe a little bit more accessible. And if the police are saying that fair evasion is leading to high levels of crime and it's leading to people bringing weapons on the train, this device right here very well could save lives. Why aren't we hearing more about practical solutions like this? What do you think could be done to fix the subway? Let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.